What's up, ladies and gentlemen? The Podfather Nate here from the Journey into Comics podcast, the flagship show of the Journey into Comics network. I just want to make sure you guys know you can tune in every single Monday for a brand new episode of our show, where if it's comic book related, we've got you covered. The following, the following, the following. Is a journey into comics. 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 Network. 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 Production. Production. I'm a dude who likes brews. It's time for brews with dudes. Ah, juicy. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, whenever you're listening to this, and welcome to another episode of Brews with Dudes. I have no idea what episode it is, or when it will air. Maybe uh, 68, might be episode 69, that would be wild. It's up there. It's going to happen one way or another, Um, but uh, it's a very special episode. We're sitting here at Taze River. I know we've done a lot of talking about Taze River, but we haven't done an episode with all their beers. I think we've had a couple sneak on when I brought Growlers home, um, but this will be our first time sampling them on air for everyone. Uh, it's made even more special by having uh, Mr. Jason Cook sitting here with us today, the head brewer, the brewer at Taze River. How are you doing this afternoon, Jason? I uh, can't complain. <laughs> awesome. Uh, doing all right. Just getting ready for the, the anniversary party. Yep. They're going to have some music. Uh, I heard there's going to be some food specials. Uh, we're kind of sneaking in early, not sneaking per se, but before the dinner rush comes in, we came in in the afternoon, and we're going to get a jump start on all these special beers that Jason made, especially for their one-year anniversary. Uh, so which one did we decide we're going to start with? Are they in? Let's see. So there's that blueberry one, which is probably on the lighter end, but where would you think we should start, Jason? Um... Well, the, okay, so your the blueberry is more of a pale. It's going to have a little little bit of bite to it. Um, you might actually go for either the the go with the porter. I think it's the lowest IBU oh, that we've cool. got. Um, the chocolate coconut porter. Um, okay. That'd be where I would oh, start with that. Well, thank you. All right, so let's see what we got here. It smells very chocolatey. Um, Ooh, it does smell very chocolatey. Very dark. You're not seeing nothing through this. Let's see what we got, shall we? Cheers. Real good taste, real smooth. Yeah. Yep, that is, uh, it said it's a porter. Um, it's chocolatey. I like it. Mm-hmm. Very chocolatey. Not too chocolatey, though. Like, you know, it's not, ter- it's not thick. It's not super thick, but right. it goes down real easy. Very easy. So, what we did with this beer, um, I guess we just took a base style American porter and added cocoa nibs and uh, toasted coconut. That's the great thing about having a kitchen here is that I can go back there and say, hey, toast me up some coconut. Um, <laughs> nice. So still working on some levels. I, I probably feel like the coconut could come through a little more prominent. But um, but overall, I think it drinks pretty smooth. And I, the chocolate, I think, is more pronounced than the coconut in this. But I, you, you do get a little bit of the coconut, yeah. too. So. Yeah. I took a couple, couple of extra sips, but I do get the coconut finally. You definitely get a lot more if you're slamming through a pint of it instead of this little sampler. But we cannot go through <laughs> go slamming through no. pints. No. Uh, all the beers we're going to try today, we've got, what, seven? Seven guys. Uh, I, I have admittedly already had uh, one or two of them. Um, but we'll get you guys in on it. I, I, I'm going to try to create the reaction I had last night to that wee heavy. I was like... Just Jesus Christ! What is this? <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. All right. So, what are we going to get into next? We're already uh, we slammed through the first mm. one there. Chocolate coconut porter is real good. The enchanted looks like a nice balance with it. I think the enchanted that one's going to be probably the most interesting one that you try, um, just from the standpoint of the the green chilies. Um, hmm. It actually turned out better than I could have expected. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's dive Give it on a go. in. a lovely color. You can see through this one. That smells really interesting, too. It's got the spiciness in the nose, too. Oh, yeah. This is going to be exciting. All right, let's see what we got. 
Cheers. Do it. Cheers. Holy shit. That's great. Wow. I love... Wow. You can really, like... I mean, damn, you, it tastes like a green chili liquefied. That is crazy. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, the the I was amazed at how well the green chili came through. Um, it You know, with the green chilies in there, you lose a little head retention on it. But uh, hop-wise, um, I use something that gives it tries to give it a little bit of brightness from the hop, a dry hop standpoint, too. So it kind of kind of pairs along well with the, the green chili, get a little bit of a citrus character. But Yeah, I feel like it's paired very well. It's very Goodness. smooth. Yeah. It has my... Uh, the, damn, it's so, it's so weird. I love your <laughs> lack of words. <laughs> the, the chili comes through more on the nose than it does in the taste, which is interesting. But it's just as, it's, it's it's kinda, just as there in the taste as well. I mean, you can... It's not, it, as, spi- it's not spicy in the mouth, I guess sure. is what I'm saying. Yeah, the heat is definitely through the nose, without a doubt. And it's, you know, green chilies aren't terribly spicy beer. We're, one of these days we're going to work with one of our customers who uh who really likes to to grow some really really hot peppers so Bring he's he's bugging me oh, all man. the time about producing a, a hot beer so we'll we'll get to that one of these that days would but. be awesome he may, he he provides the uh the peppers that go into the like the hellfire right hellfire yeah. seasoning yep i oh my love goodness. that shit i put that on everything <laughs> that i can it's so good it just sounds like it would, it would tear up my intestines. <laughs> they, he needs to he needs to bottle it up and then sell it. I say the same thing with that Alabama white sauce. I'm like you guys need to put that on the shelves. Mm. That's what makes that's what makes Tays a wonderfully <laughs> wonderful experience. It's the only place I can get my Alabama white. <laughs> you don't have Alabama white sauce, Alabama whoo. I don't know how to do it. I don't I don't try, and I haven't tried to replicate it. Let the, I'm gonna let the boys in the kitchen do it because they're doing let, a good job. Let of the it. pros, let the pros handle yeah, it. Yeah, I don't need a knockoff of it. I just want the real thing. So, all right. Well, that was well, interesting. That was good. Yeah, that was a fun one. You uh, and anyone should definitely try to get down here. That's gonna listen to this. I believe this is gonna come out this Saturday. Um, and there's a chance it's Wednesday. There's a chance some of these might might survive till the weekend. But uh, we'll definitely. Uh, they're gonna be busted into. That's for sure. We will have thrown up some stuff on the old Facebook to let people know that they need to get down here and try these now because they will not last. None of them. Mm. Speaking mm. of them not mm. lasting, mm. which one are we going to dive into next? Hmm. After I don't know. That, that sounds good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean uh, – after that, I would uh, – you might go for a little change of pace and go for something a little bit more on the multi or balanced side, so maybe the sledgehammer. Yep. That's mm. a great idea. Thank you. You're very welcome. How am I going to describe the color of this one? You can't see through it. It's, it's oh, no. From the description that I saw brown. earlier, it's, a, it's an English ale. I mean, this is typically, I mean, this is like an exactly amber? what an English ale looks like. It's very cloudy. It's Yeah, it's uh, an English English strong ale. English um, strong ale, okay. So, yeah, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to feature those malts, but then go ahead and have a little bit of bite to it, too. But and then it rings in at seven ish percent, a little over seven. I believe, I believe. that's what I saw. Like I said, listed at seven percent. Yeah, I believe this was our lunch beer. It was our I lunch think we beer. We opened with that. It was delicious. Yep. Uh, I need. I do need a reminder though. So cheers. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. Still delicious. <laughs> Definitely malty. Definitely maltier. Yes. Than everything else that we've been having so far. Working like your way it, through all that English yeast. <laughs> nice uh, well, I mean, I think that, I think, I, I, as far as the yeast character on this, I think it's a little more subdued um, than some. I, I uh, actually switched up my yeast a little bit, and this one doesn't have quite um, the the English yeast character as um, the previous English strain I used. So, um, I think it's a little more subdued than what in some of our English beers of the past. It's sweet. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, like the caramel or toffee notes. It's I love it. It's very good. Thank you. Man, you know, I was thinking we were just gonna take a couple sips of each of these and move on. But I they, know, but we're going down so easy. We're slamming like, oh, them. We'll finish it. Good thing I limited the size pour to, yeah. to the sampler sizes versus the the eight ounces. Yeah, huh? that would have been that would have been troublesome. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have been getting out of here in a timely fashion. No, sir. <laughs> um, no, the thing about, and I guess this is just my own personal 
thing, but like it seems like a lot of our maltier styles and just the trend like isn't towards maltier beers, and which is unfortunate because there are a lot of really great multi-style beers out there. But usually it's lighter and then your IPAs and things like that. But there are a lot of great multi beers that uh, that people have yet to discover just because. You know, they, they haven't got there yet. They have, yeah, yeah, they're not there. Or on this. their journey. Especially <laughs> right. with the latest uh, trend, I guess you could say, which has been like IPAs and the like and yeah. craft beer. I mean, it's all just people are starting to get on their own routine there. And Yeah. So, I mean, I you know, it'd be nice, you know, I'll, I'll always have, we'll always have here a good uh, representation of some multi-styles too, even though we might not go through them as quickly. Um you know, for me personally, it's uh, it's you know something that hopefully we can lead the crusade and right. and uh, the the trends will start s- you know swinging around that way at some point. Oh but, yeah, for sure. And I'm sure from a different standpoint, you want a little bit of each style of beer to appeal to all the different types of people yeah. that do come by. Because I mean, that, that's just the name yeah, of the game. Absolutely. I feel like that's I feel like in terms of uh, um, places that you can get beer around here, I think that that that's what makes taste stand out is that they you guys have got a nice a little bit of everything going all over the place. Hands down. It's oh, definitely yeah. give, get, gotten me to understand different styles that I like more. Like, I might not have known the difference necessarily between stouts and porters, per se, or um, between the different, like, uh, you know, Scottish styles and, and browns. And, and you just, it's hard to distinguish that when you're not able to uh, have them all in a, in a setting where you can just try a little bit of it instead of, drinking a 12 ounce of something that you you know don't necessarily know or like that much you know yeah we, get, get yourself in on it kind of yeah. wean yourself onto it that's not the word you wean off how do you get on do you, wean you gotta on? ease yourself in ease, ease yourself in. in there you there go. go there you go there we go all right <laughs> so we just finished the what was it the that sledgehammer. Was sledgehammer yeah so we've got we still got the comet that's the ipa the is comet that? is yeah it's a, a smash uh, IPA with Comet Hops. What's that um, last? The IPL? The, yeah, it's the uh, India Pale Lager. Um, the India Pale Lager. So, yeah, that that actually, from that one, I, I, if you want to try that one next. Yeah, that's probably From, right. from uh, my brewing standpoint, I'm actually happiest with the way that this one turned out. Um, I don't know. It's just a good, I mean, an IPL is essentially, you know, you're brewing an IPA. You can just go ahead and use some lager yeast with it, and you... Hmm. Um, you know, you just ferment it at lager temperatures, and I went ahead and dry hopped it. Um, so you get those IPA characteristics, but then you also get a cleaner, uh, you know, crisper finish yeah. with oh, that like, lager like yeast. Have a lager. Um, okay. So it's just, you know, I, I personally think that, um, you know, you see a lot of these brute IPAs out now where they're using champagne yeast in IPAs. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, the IPLs have been out a while, you know, and, and I think that your brute's just kind of a, a next step almost yeah where you kind of go to a little more extreme as far as you're fermenting but um but yeah so i i don't know i i like i like this style this beer a lot it definitely has a i, I cheated i didn't cheers before i drank i'm sorry oh it's okay I'll yeah we can cheers, cheers now you. cheers cheers yeah yeah i love how it, i love how easy it goes down yeah how much flavor is still there that you wouldn't that I I don't personally have been I have not been able to pull out of loggers as much. Maybe I just haven't had really good loggers. I'm sure I haven't. Um, yeah, I like that it's got that. It feels like an IPA goes down goes down a little easier. Goes down very smooth, and there yeah, you can definitely taste the uh, oh. The characteristics of the different hops. I can't exactly name every particular set of hops, but I can definitely taste like a little citrus, maybe a little. Yeah, there's some uh, citrus and some of the the hops I use feature um, kind of more of a tropical fruit yeah. char- characteristic yeah, sure. to them. Um, I use some. Uh, oh shoot! Well, I used actually some comet in there, some cashmere, and I believe one called triple pearl. <laughs> um, and yeah, they'll. A few of those have a tendency to have a little more tr- of a tropical fruit character to them, so you get a little bit of that um, and a little citrus. Yeah, and then, I'm digging uh, it. And that clean finish with the lager. It, lager go- yeast. it goes down like a beach beer. Like, dare I say, it's crushable. 
I say there's a shower beer. I could, careful, that's, shower beer. careful, that's seven percent. I know, <laughs> it's over seven percent. Not saying you should, be, <laughs> you should be crushing, it, but you can. Yeah, Ooh. that that one came in over seven percent. So. Goodness, over seven percent. It doesn't Oof. feel like it. Though. It's no. almost a, it's almost an imperial. It's getting Ooh. borderline imperial, but yeah. So. Hmm. Excellent. That'd be something an imperial lager. Hmm. Ah, that? it's it's been done. They're oh, out shit. there. <laughs> Holy cow! People have done stranger I, things. I'm not sure if I have the balls to drink something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's out. It's been done. So maybe I'll have to do one of those here soon. There we go. Ooh. Well, we've got. What do we got now? The, the Comet, the Blueberry, and then the Wee Heavy. And the Wee Heavy. <laughs> it's just lingering. It's like the big elephant you gotta, in the room. you got to finish with the oldest beer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna, we're just going to just crush everything that we put in with that Wee Heavy. Um, Oof. Uh, I kind of want to I I go for the Blueberry. I, I was just about to say the Blueberry because then the that. Comet would be a nice... Segue. Nice in between. Yeah, a nice segue into, into the, the Big beast. Nasty. All right, so I believe that is, yeah, that one there. Mmm. You can definitely smell the blueberry. Ooh, that smells delicious. It does. Cheers. Cheers. Tink. Now see that's 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 about right. That's where it it's got a lot of it tastes like a beer and it's a good beer, and then at the end you've got that little hint of blueberry. But it's a, it's just a, enough. It's a strong enough hint to say that's blueberry. Whereas something like um oh what's the one like I've had like tangerine beers and it's like I bet there's tangerine in there, but I'm not getting the 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 punch of it. That is delicious. Yeah, I really really like that. Especially after I, I just chewed it around a little bit, and you can definitely taste the blueberry more instead of just you know taking a straight gulp down. I think it takes a, a couple of sips really. Um, you definitely yeah. it's definitely got a bigger blueberry nose to it. The flavor doesn't quite follow through as big. Um, you know, it's definitely I'm, there though. I'll it's tweak subtle. it to make it a little more prominent. Um, Is this you know, your first batch? Of first one with the blueberry. Okay. So um, I was just trying to dial in what I what I use. So, um, so yeah, it'll get tweaked and the blueberry will be more prominent in the future, no, but it still wrong, comes, it bad. still comes through. Um, but, uh, also I think with the style, with that pale ale style, I think the little bit of the bite of the pale ale probably just kind of causes that blueberry to fade a little bit. So, mm-hmm. so, um, uh, we'll dose it. We'll dose it with more blueberries next time and we'll get a little more pronounced flavor to it. That I've won't be a bad thing. That I've won't always be wondered, bad at all. do you actually put physical blueberries in the mix when you're doing all this? Uh, for the one-barrel batch, yes. Um, hmm. You know, once you start thinking about scaling up, it gets a little bit tougher and You don't have to, like, messier. mash it or nothing? Or it's just... Oh, we, uh, we it, it got run through and pureed. Um, oh, I see. Okay. So I, probably a little bit more than what I had wanted. I actually was... I asked that they be just kind of you know, burst open a little bit, but it came back to me pureed. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, you ran yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah we're, right. we're, it's all going in. So right. yeah. I don't know, I've always just been curious, like, you know, whenever they say like a milkshake beer or, you know, a blueberry beer, et cetera, et cetera. I've always wondered, like, do they actually put the shit different places, there? different places claim they do. Like I know 450 says that they put a lot of fresh stuff in it. And I know there's another place around that does, uh, artificial flavoring so it's probably like sure. a like sugar it's concentrated yeah i mean they're there you know you can get a lot of uh, purees and things like that and extracts and you know there are people that have that are have a refined enough palate that will taste it and say yeah that's extract or yeah mm-hmm. that's fresh Holy cow. yeah i know i'm not i'm not one of those myself that's insane. But, <laughs> but i i i totally believe that 450 uses a lot of fresh stuff in theirs because at Winterfest this past weekend, they uh, we were getting some people coming straight from 450 over us, and you could see like little seeds from like whatever it was, like either wow. bl- like blackberry or no raspberries. kidding. Like huh. they're glad you could just tell like yeah, there's got to be some fresh stuff that's in there because smooth beer. So we were we were rinsing that like some I don't know what if it was one of their milkshake beers or something like that, but huh. we were rinsing those off. Like yep, that was that came from 450 North. <laughs> so. We we that's snuck really cool. in. 
the person that was driving me didn't get off work until I think three thirty, so we didn't get in until just after five. So Yikes. I didn't even I, I didn't even see you. I didn't make it over. I didn't even think about stopping at four fifty. I'm like I had enough of your beers. I was, yeah. What do you yeah yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to think of trying to think of some places we hit up. I went to the Maidens one. they they don't say they're an Iron Maiden bar, but the logo is Maiden, and they they name they've got like pinball machines and they've got the Maiden machine and. That's They're awesome. totally an Iron Maiden. Bar. Okay, <laughs> until awesome. they, until I, they get a cease and desist. Until they get a cease and desist. <laughs> They're in Southern Indiana somewhere. I remember oh. them, and I don't remember a whole lot of other. We were we we probably got te- like ten different places. Had to oh man or hustle just, and yeah, and we we just went we just went for the big beers for some reason. Just like you well, only had an hour. Yeah, right. <laughs> so let's just get in and get it done. So it was a lot of fun. I wish I would have got there sooner, but. We made we made uh, good on our time, I think. <laughs> quality, so quality power hour, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it was. I got a cool hat out of it too. It's got a keg on it. Ah, nice. Drinking well, Indiana, drink Indiana beer. Yep. Let's uh, bust into this comet. Let's do it. Like a comet. We're making uh, we're making records here. That's what, technically five different beers in twenty minutes. I know. Depending on how we uh, we sell that, it, it can make us sound bad. <laughs> like. Boys, that's dangerous. Now they're just tasters. Don't get your panties in a bunch, okay? <laughs> it's like, did they say they were doing this at three in the afternoon? Yes. Getting torn on a Wednesday. Don't judge. This smells tasty. Cheers. This is the Comet Smash. Yes. Comet Smash. Comet Smash. Come on, Becky. What is that flavor? It sure is. It's tasty, I would say. It's got a, a fruity kind of taste, but I don't know what kind of fruit I'm thinking. It's a uh, comet, uh, just from. You, know, you read the description, and it was actually, it's actually been around a long time. Um, it was, I think, cultivated in the 70s, um, kind of fell out, um, and, um, you know, it just kind of recently has become popular again. And, and I got this from uh, Jesse at uh, the Pines Hop Farm here locally because mm-hmm. um, I, hadn't, I hadn't used Comet before. So uh, he had some growing out there, so I went ahead and got some and uh, decided to just feature it on its own in this in this single hopped beer. Um, but uh, I'm trying to remember exactly the description of of it. But I, um, you know, I know there's some uh, grapefruit tangerine ish. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I first tasted it, like it almost had a um, a candy sweetness to it. I yeah. that was like my first impression. Yeah. But um, some grapefruit tangerine, and then I think it's also described as having um, a unique earthy character to it. Um, but I don't, I didn't pick that up myself, but that's uh, in, the, in the hop description that you see. I definitely got more of the, the grapefruit. Yeah, more grapefruit. Than the, than the earthy. More tangerine. I do taste a little bit of earthy. It, it's some, mm-hmm. it, not on first bite, but when it when it was sitting there for a second is when it got the grapefruit yeah. kind of fruity taste for me. That was good. I like that. I've seen Comet before, but I don't think I've ever used it. Uh, we were looking at our Untapped earlier, and it seemed that there's a whole bunch of different variations on Comets too. So I don't know if that's if it's just a name. Or it just it's the name to be of a hop. Coincident. Oh, it's the name of a hop. Okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. it's it's the the hop. That we use for okay. it. So, yep. Well, that makes more sense. That just makes too much sense. <laughs> All right. Well, goodness, we've tried we've tried a lot of beer so far, and it's time I to finish on uh, that wee heavy. Onto the big nasty. Just a little morsel of candy, man. <laughs> <laughs> goodness. It smells like Ooh. it smells like a candy you get from grandma. <laughs> 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 it's wrapped uh, in a little like orange. Like a little orange wrapper. <laughs> smells a little bit more potent than Grandma's candy. Whew. Well, cheers. I did it again. 
I'm sorry. Damn you, Scuba Steve! <laughs> mm. Oh, oh! Just car- <laughs> caramely. Oh. Instantly taste the caramel notes, and then you just taste the boozy notes. It's like, oh fuck. <laughs> Boozy caramel, but Boozy. it's but it's it, but it is so easy going down. We drink yep. a pint of it. <laughs> I did last night. Oof. I was feeling good. So yeah, this this was our uh, second batch that we ever brewed on, uh, at all. Um, we brewed it on the one barrel because I was trying to um, trying to get some beers ready for the winter warmer last year. Oh. Um, just just to make that our first festival and uh so you know took it to the winter warmer and and uh you know it was it was nice then but i with a wee heavy it's one of those beers that benefits from age now you know most people you know most time it's not a year but it's just one of those beers that gets it mellows out and you get more that just the character of it just builds as it sits and and this one's held up incredibly well i'm I was pretty happy with it when I tapped it. Yeah, I know it's it's an ass kicker. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's a it's a good ass kicking. It's <laughs> it's, it's the good, good kind. <laughs> it's a good ass kicking. Mm. That was delicious. It is even better the second time. <laughs> All right, it's come that time in the episode where we. Play the ranking game. I guess we're not really ranking. We're just saying which one we enjoyed the most. Yeah. Um. And um, I really like the IPL. I really, I really like it. But I, I also really like the porter. I don't know which one do you. Which one would you say, Zach? I think that's the first time you said my name on this show. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, you didn't introduce me. Oh, it's man. okay. I Everyone knows. Everyone knows. Exactly. You've only, you've only been on 25 or 30. I've only been like, you know, half of the episodes. Also, some, in, some fuck. also introducing Zach. <laughs> but it's, How you doing, um, Zach? I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, for, thanks for having me, dog. Yep. <laughs> yep. Good to uh, have you. <laughs> no, I'm honestly liking this We Heavy a lot. The caramel notes are super prominent. It's like sweet. It's, I say almost a little malty. Maybe I don't definitely, but yeah, it's like it's an ass kicker of a beer, which I do appreciate. I do like the ass kickers. We'll I'll have to brew it up again soon, and we can have it a year from now. And I will say, <laughs> yeah, right. I do wish the blueberry had a little bit more blueberry we'll taste to it. We'll work on it. Sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes it takes a few tries. Yeah. So yeah, we were warned beforehand, like, hey, it may not be as blueberry as you may think, but with that said. It's still a good beer. You know, obviously with the name, though, you would expect maybe a little bit more blueberry. Yeah, I agree. So, so what were you saying? You saying the wheat heavy? You giving it to the, the wheat heavy? heavy. Give it to the heavy. Give it to the heavy. Uh, I think I'll give it to the. Uh, I think I'll give it to the IPL. That's what I think. I really like the comet, though. I like I like the the fruitiness of the comet. I can't um, decide. The sledgehammer was. It might, be, it might be this one or this the one. The sledgehammer was a close second for me though too, because like I said, I that English, the English uh, ale, is I love that the, the flavor of it. Yeah, I really do. So see, you're you're who I'm looking for. You need to you need to start bringing people around to the maltier styles. So it sounds like the, you're the, the two maltiest for the malt. The two two maltiest the malt beers. Missionary. The malt missionary. So. Excellent. Trademarked. Copyrighted. Done. You're in it. <laughs> Cool. Well, that brings us to the end there. Uh, yeah. Zach, thanks, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate <laughs> man, dog, it. <laughs> man, th- thanks for, thanks for uh, having me. Yep, anytime, anytime. Recognizing me and all this other stuff. Yep, I'm good at it. I'm good <laughs> at it. Uh, and Jason, thanks for, thanks for sitting down with us. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, thanks yeah, for having thank me. You. We did have to kind of co- convince him to stay <laughs> for us. But Just a little I, bit. I appreciate it. We really no, appreciate no, it. it's cool. No, I, uh, yeah, I I'm I'm, uh, I'm glad I stuck around, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was a yeah, special it was occasion. It's uh, it tastes uh, it's their one year anniversary. I don't know if I said that at the beginning. We might have. Uh, we alluded to it at least. Uh, so one year, uh, making beers in Lafayette, and uh, I've been loving it. I know Zach's been loving it. 
I think Jason's yeah. been loving it. He acts like it at Except least. Except for the pinky thing. Except for the whole <laughs> ripping off your pinky thing. Yeah, saw that in the news. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. There was that thing. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, uh, this is uh, Nick, Zach, and Jason signing out with Bruise with Dudes. We'll see you next time. <laughs> hey, I'm Morgan Danielle. And I'm Luke O'Blaze. And you can check us out on www.themetalexperience.com for the latest interviews featuring punk and metal bands from the Chicago area. And on our website, you can read interviews and reviews from bands all over the world in our blog section, either on Reviews from the Crypt or the Let's Chat Q&A sessions. Also, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to keep it metal.